In this screencast I'm going to show you how to set up an LDAP server using OpenLDAP. Uh, for those unfamiliar with what LDAP is, you could think of it as a type of database. Effectively what we're going to be doing in our LDAP server is storing information about objects. Uh, these objects are going to be users or machines. Um, so in, in a sense if you're used to using uh, Microsoft's Active Directory, the concept is very similar. It's a place to store information about various things. Um, one of its main uses um, is actually for centralized user authentication, which I'm hoping to cover in a later screencast. Um, so today what we're doing is installing it and then actually setting up a few users in there. Um, so to begin with, we're going to apt get install slap d. Now this is actually the open LDAP um, server. Uh, when installing that it's going to ask us for an administrator password. This isn't actually your root password um, but a password you'd like to use for the administrative user um, when you're adding or editing objects in LDAP you'll need that password. Um, once that's installed I'm also going to install on this machine the LDAP utilities um, LDAP-utils. Uh, these are a set of command line utilities that you can use for querying the LDAP or um, or modifying it. And we're also going to install PHP LDAP admin, which is a web based um, sort of client side editor, I suppose. A web based editor for the LDAP so we can actually log in and start putting some information in it. So once that it's installed, we're going to want to get the etc ldap ldap.conf file and um, set this base and URI. So um, on my network, I've chosen test.net as um, my domain, and for the ldap URI, I'm going to put the IP address at my ldap server, which is 172.16.1.1. Um, with that installed. Uh, you should now be able to browse the LDAP server 172.16.1.1 and we're going to go slash php LDAP admin to view the php LDAP admin page. Uh, now this error that comes up here saying that the memory limit is too low, currently 16 meg. Um, not too sure why that happens in, in Ubuntu but um, you can fix that by going to etc php5 Apache 2 and editing the php.ini file. Just in this file I'm going to search for memory and you can see there that memory limit variable. You want to set that to 32 meg. Uh, just save that and restart Apache. And once that's restarted we should be able to go back to that web page and actually view something, hopefully. Yeah. So control R to refresh that. Now I'm just going to log into PHP LDAP admin. Um, up here all this stuff should just be put in incorrect for you, admin test net. And um, that password that I chose when I was first installing LDAP, which was 123 in my case, I'm going to use. So in here you can sort of see a tree view of what's in the LDAP, which isn't a lot already. We've got one user here called admin, which is used for authenticating when we're making modifications to the LDAP. So I'm just going to go ahead and create an entry here and uh, from this list of different th objects that we can add, I'm going to choose to add an organizational unit and I'm just going to call this one people. Um, I'm then also going to add yet another, another organizational unit and this one I'm going to call groups. So the first object I'm going to add to my groups, um, OU, I'm going to create a child entry and I'm going to add post 6 group which is basically a, a Unix group and I'm going to call this group admin user which is the group that I'm going to assign all my um, administrators to. Um, under the people OU I'm now going to create a user and I'm going to select the object type as a user account and this user I'm going to create I'm going to call uh, give a first name of Jotu last name admin give a user ID of Joe and uh, 
set Joe's password in here, also to 123, and then tell uh, put Joe into the group admin user that we just created before. Oops, it's not looking too good. There we go. So you can start to see now, um, hopefully, a little more about what LDAP does. So in here, you can see we've got these organizational um, units, which I suppose are kind of like folders, not really, but they are for organizing you, your objects that you put in here. And then you can see we're starting to store some some user data. In our case, it's a, a Unix group and a Unix user. Um, so that's basically PHP LDAP admin. Hopefully, you're starting to get a feel for what this is all about now. Um, one last thing I'll show you while we've got time is I'm just going to export uh, Joe's settings here and I'm going to export them as an LDAP file. Now, if you've been reading up on LDAP previously, you'll probably come across these files. And uh, basically, what it is, I'm just going to copy and paste this here into a, a file. And, um, Basically what it is, is a way of exporting or importing um, LDAP information. So if I open up this LDAP file here, as an example, what I can do if I want to create a user called Jane, I can take Joe's information, um, modify the various parts that need to be modified to uh, make it say Jane instead, give Jane a user ID of 1001 and with this modified version of that LDAP file we can use a command line uh, utilities uh, called LDAP add to actually import that file uh, if you're wondering what all these command line switches are um, typing man space LDAP add at the command line where it should give you um, the manual file for this, so that will explain what those switch, various switches do. Um, that LDAP password again, the one that we entered when we first installed Open LDAP 123, and that should have added our um, our chain news entry. So I'm just going to go back into here, and click refresh, and you should now be able to see under the people section we've now got a new user called Jane Admin. With uh, Jane's credentials, so hopefully this has given you a little insight into how to get up and running with um, Open LDAP very quickly. Uh, PHP LDAP admin is probably one of the better editors I've come across, and of course, being web-based means you can log in from any machine. There's no client-side software required to install it, um, and I've only added a, a few users here, which. Um, in the following screencast, the one that I'm going to do after this, I'm intending on actually showing you how to use these users um, from a Linux server to to authenticate. Sorry. So when you jump on a, a, a Linux server, instead of looking at the slash etc password file as it usually would, or etc shadow, it's actually going to query the LDAP for that user information. The LDAP is going to send that back to the server, and then it'll decide whether that user should be allowed into the system or not. So. Um, that's just one of the uses of LDAP. Uh, hopefully this has given you a bit of idea as to how to set it up and maybe even a little idea as to what LDAP is actually about. Um, so stay tuned for the, the podcasts that will follow this one. Thanks for watching.